up in arms. Or Snake. Legend of Youngstown. Somehow we talked Snake into doing all those intros. I mean, I probably didn't take much coaxing. I think this was 2001 I made this video. And I think the video came before the company. I just started filming what was going on in the area. It was almost like kind of extension of Empire East, even though Jim made Empire East. This was kind of like the sequel, unofficially. Square One, I wanted to be kind of like an old school, like a push thing. Just more of a group of friends that kind of rode together and had fun, made videos, made full-length videos, and I don't know, after watching them, it like, you felt like you were a part of that group of friends. He's just part of the group, you know, part of the crew, and we just made a video and kind of did a company to coincide with the video, and obviously anything I did, Mike was going to be a part of, so I think him and Sesney and maybe Ty were the original Square One riders. Uh, who filmed all the uh, Utah footage for this? Uh, it was usually Elf, Elf or Behringer. Okay. Yeah, you know, they were always down to help out with all the, all the Utah footage, because back then I don't think I ever made it out to Utah, actually. I think in, in this video part, you see a lot of the maturity in Aiken's riding. From like Empire East, you could just see it coming. Like you're like, man, there's that style. Like yeah. you watch this part and you're like, man, like that's that Mike Aiken style that that had you know really made him famous. Came to be known as the the yeah. Aiken style. Like, like the one footed flatties and like how his legs and knees would bend. It was like almost like the way he could do stuff was like exclusive to only Mike Aiken because like only he could really bend that way. Right, right. So, the Gumby, uh, the Gumby limbs. Yeah. <laughs> He had such a good fluid style, yet everything was so precise and refined, and I think this is a good, you can see that starting to happen in this part for sure. And he's what he's a lot more well-rounded. When I saw him doing all the ramp stuff, I'm like, damn, he's a way better ramp rider than me now. I need to step my, my game up. When the young kid is starting to just make waves, you're like, oh man, I need to stop slacking. Yeah. I think also after this part came out is when every, Every 15 and 16 year old kid started listening to Slayer yeah, because definitely. Mikey wrote to Angel of Death. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you listen to Slayer. And they're like, nah, dude, it's Mike Aiken, yeah. man. That was the start of the Mike Aiken uh, <laughs> factor Yeah. In, in all the kids and, and how they dressed and acted. I remember at the one time, it was midnight on his 18th birthday, and he walked into a country fair and uh, he bought a pack of Marlboro Reds just because he could. <laughs> because it was his 18th birthday and he rolled them up in the sleeve of his t-shirt like i mean he didn't smoke he bought those stuck them in his sleeve and i'm pretty sure they were there for a good week or so <laughs> until they finally got mangled from i don't know if he crashed or what but <laughs> a lot of the stuff he does is so much harder than, than it looks in videos that's a 30 foot jump that's like a foot tall yeah and he just pops this huge one-footed flatty off of it you know like he's riding a box jump or something oh yeah you know i mean i think that effortless style kind of <laughs> It just makes you not realize how fucking hard half the shit he's doing actually is. Yeah. It's funny too, back back in this day, I mean, this is like fall footage where it obviously rained like the day before, <laughs> before it occurred to us to put tarps over the jumps yeah. when it rained. <laughs> so obviously, again, the conditions were not always favorable and yet Mikey's still just ripping as he does.